Greetings, everyone. A serial entrepreneur, columnist, past chairman of CII Western Region, and former managing director of MAN Force Trucks, director at Force Motors, and several other companies, and now the founder of Pinnacle Mobility Solutions. Our guest today is Mr. Sudhir Mehta, chairman and managing director of Pinnacle Industries. Mr. Mehta has recently been in the news for the launch of ACA an automotive and technology company that aims to bring sustainable, profitable, and efficient electric commercial vehicles and solutions to accelerate the mass adopt adaptation of EVs globally. The company has now launched its newest nine meter pure electric and zero emission bus, Acre E9. In this conversation today, we shall talk about the E9, Acre and Pinnacle's foray into the electric mobility space, among other things. Mr. Mehta, welcome to Mobility Outlook. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. Good afternoon and thank you for having me. Right. So Mr. Mehta, I'll start off uh, by asking you uh, if you could describe the opportunity that you see in the electric mobility domain for ACA. You know, what's the roadmap for the company? Sure. So I, I think uh, the roadmap for our company is predicated on uh, the movement towards electric and hydrogen vehicles. Uh, as you are aware, India is the largest importer of uh, fossil fuels in the world. And right. uh, strategically, our government uh, took a very important call to move away from fossil fuels and towards electric mobility. Okay. So this was really the driving force for our starting ACA. We have been thinking about the electric mobility space for at least the last six, seven years. Okay. And then a few years ago, we realized that this transformation is about to happen in India. As you know, the automotive industry is the largest manufacturing industry in the world. And as part of that, uh, the EV industry is now poised to go through a complete transition. So our uh, thought process was that we really need to create a platform and a company which uh, brings together the best in electric mobility and uh, tries to participate in this revolution which is going to happen. So ACA actually means coming together. Right. And that's really what we are trying to do is we are trying to bring together the elements uh, which we believe that India will be a very important member of the change towards electric mobility. Sure. Could you also explain to us your focus on your decision to go into the commercial vehicle space and also your focus around the last mile mobility business? Sure. So if one talks about sustainability, uh, sustainability ultimately is a function of the vehicles and what kilometers that they drive. Mm -hmm. So while uh, passenger cars are, of course, a very important segment of the market, if you will see a typical usage of the passenger car is between 5 to 7%. Right. But on the other hand, a commercial vehicle is typically traveling all the time. So if one look, looks at a macro movement towards sustainability and towards alternative mobility, we believe that commercial vehicles will play a very, very important role in that. And amongst this, the two uh, large and important segments, one is the segment for public transportation in India, mm -hmm. is buses and by buses, I mean both city buses and long distance coaches. Sure. Now, that's been a market which is very, very underserved in India, just to give, kind of give you an, a macro view on this. Mm -hmm. In India, we have somewhere around, I think, 1.3 buses per thousand people. Now, you even compare it with a country like Brazil or South Africa, they, they have around six to seven per thousand people. Mm -hmm. So, one, for a country of our size and scale, our, electric, our public transportation is woefully inadequate. Now, when we move towards electric mobility, we believe that one of the things will happen, which will happen is that there will be a huge shift towards electric mobility. And this is coming from the fact that not only is it sustainable, but it will also become profitable because of the increase in conventional fuel prices and the movement towards electric mobility. So that's one area that we are working on. Mm -hmm. The second uh, very important area is last mile connectivity, which is right. basically... Uh, the movement towards what we call the last mile delivery vehicles, which are typically the one and a half, two ton uh, GVW vehicles. Now, this is also a very large market in India. Pre-COVID, it was almost a half a million vehicles. Mm -hmm. And if you globally see the addressable market, it's about 6 million vehicles a year. And we believe this is the market also which will move towards electric mobility because these are vehicles which typically ply in cities which are very polluted. And again, the impact that we can make on the environment is maximum in this case. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Now, how does ACA really plan to play a role in creating and developing the ecosystem that is required uh, to sort of make electric mobility more sustainable in the coming decades? Sure. So I think, uh, again, having been from the auto industry for a very long time, typically what used to be uh, the very important factors for commercial vehicles, there is really uh, what is called the total cost of ownership. And ultimately, a commercial vehicle is bought because the TCO is the lowest. And this is why one commercial vehicle versus the other sells. Now, our belief is that uh, with the movement towards electric mobility, we have attempted to create vehicles which have the best in class TCO. And the TCO ultimately comes from a combination of things. It comes from initial cost, which in the case of electric vehicles today is higher than conventional vehicles. But we hope eventually over a period of time, this difference will narrow. Mm -hmm. The big saving in electric vehicles comes from two areas. One, it comes from permit registration and taxes, which are, of course, more favorable towards electric vehicles. But most importantly, it comes from the saving of fuel. Mm -hmm. which is the difference of what you would pay for a conventional diesel vehicle to what you would pay for an electric vehicle. And right. this is where these vehicles score very favorably. So in fact, the more you run an electric vehicle, the more the comparative saving is versus a conventional vehicle. And this is basically what got us to start thinking about building an ecosystem in India and really creating a platform in India, which will not only be sold in India, but can be sold really in all emerging markets like Africa, Asian countries, Latin America, because all of these will have similar movements to electric mobility. Okay, okay. Could you also give us a sense of uh, the product development that has gone into the AK E9? Uh, has, has this been developed completely in India? Yes, so we are very proud of the fact that uh, this was a product that we designed from complete ground up in India. Uh, if you see today the electric vehicles available in the world, uh, broadly it can be segmented into two categories. One is the vehicles which are available, and I'm talking now commercial vehicle electric mobility, yeah. I'm not talking cars. Uh, one is what the vehicles are available in the US and Europe. These are high technology, uh, extremely reliable, but very expensive. The second, and probably what has been dominating in the market so far, in fact, with about 90, 95% global market share in volume terms is the Chinese vehicles, which have been made in big quantities in China, but again, come with certain limitations and also are lower in price compared to what is available in Europe. Right. Our attempt really was to create a product which is right for India and to focus on the most important element of the electric vehicle, which is the software which runs it. So normally, most of the electric vehicles which run in India, or many of them still are using Chinese software, are using uh, things which are, uh, let's say, kind of closed. And our attempt here was to develop the software completely in India, also to develop the series of components which are used. So in an electric vehicle, essentially the most important components are really the battery, which right. com comprises 30 to 40% of the cost. Then there is the axle motors, as well as then all of the other equipment, including the software that goes into it. And uh, we are very proud of the fact that this, all of this has been done in India using our engineering team. We have several patents that we have already have obtained and are, are in the process of obtaining. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of the parts which, are, which you see in the vehicle today are parts which are developed in India. Some of them, of course, in partnership with global suppliers, but the designs belong to us. So bat uh, we've developed the technology for the vehicle. For Actually, the vehicle. from a battery point of view, we are agnostic to battery technology. Right. Uh, our feeling is that the automotive OEMs are not the ones best equipped to develop battery technology. Battery technology is changing at a very furious pace. Today, it's lithium ion. Tomorrow, it's solid state. Third, right. maybe something else. So we actually have developed a platform which can accommodate different battery pack configurations and different battery technologies. And we are working very closely with the experts who are making this mm -hmm. and we actually buy it from them because our feeling is that the customer should have a choice between various battery technologies mm -hmm. and there will be certain use cases which lend themselves for different battery packs so for instance uh, there is today a technology which is available where the battery pack can last about 15 years but the initial cost of that is almost twice as much as a normal battery pack now mm -hmm. In certain use cases, that may be better. In other use cases, people prefer a lower cost of capital. So we want to give our customer the choice to choose between these different battery technologies. Okay, okay, okay. So, so could you also talk about the, specifically about the ACA E9? Uh, could you give us a sense of the go-to-market strategy that you want to adopt for this uh, product? 
Sure. So to start with, for buses, we have launched our nine meter bus. Mm -hmm. But uh, the way our product is designed, it's a monocoque chassis. So you can have different configurations. We will also be introducing shortly a 12 meter and a 13 meter version of that. Mm -hmm. So these will have various seating configurations. This has the widest uh, configuration at the moment in the country, which is 2.55 meters. So the bus is the widest in width, which allows us to actually cater for more space. Uh, the benefit of our product is it's designed purely from ground up for electric and hydrogen technology. We are not suited for conventional vehicles. In fact, we cannot accommodate conventional IC engines. To that extent, it's allowed us to do a number of things. First and foremost is light weighting, which means basically light weighting for an EV means more reach. And yeah. that has the maximum impact on uh, the operating economics of the vehicle. So our vehicle is the lightest in its category. Mm -hmm. Number two, being an EV, we are able to plan it that the life of the vehicle is much uh, greater than the conventional vehicles. In any case, breakdowns in EVs are much less. EVs have a longer life period. And the only thing you really have to change over a period of time is the battery packs. And there also, after about seven years or so, you can either repair the cells or replace the battery pack, which then goes into secondary storage applications. So to that extent, the vehicle is designed for a much longer period of usage. All right. And uh, it's also designed for Indian use cases. Hmm. You, you also mentioned that beyond the nine meter product that you have currently showcased, uh, you are going to go to 12 meter and 13 meter options. Uh, but when it comes to last mile uh, connectivity, Mr. Mehta, are you also looking at smaller uh, products uh, in the pipeline? Yes, in the future, we will look at those. At the moment, our uh, focus is this. After the city bus configuration, we are also looking at coaches. So okay. coaches is the next segment that we will go after because again, here with India expanding rapidly with the road systems improving and in a post COVID environment, we do believe that the market for coaches will come back strongly. And right. here again, the movement towards uh, e-mobility or hydrogen will happen over a period of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You also mentioned that of course, you know, ECA uh, is going to look at hydrogen uh, pretty strongly. What is the, how do you assess the opportunity that hydrogen offers in a market like India? So hydrogen is definitely a mid to long term game, but personally, my belief is this is a game changer for India uh, for a simple reason that hydrogen will be very suitable for long distances. So if you're traveling, let's say 400 kilometers or 600 kilometers, typically the size and the weight of a battery pack, unless you're going to recharge along the way, is going to be quite large. Hydrogen actually allows the possibility to have much smaller battery packs and to, to have an option which is very suitable for long distance. Now today, uh, hydrogen expensive, but one of the stated objectives of the government, and there is a huge amount of private sector investment, which is now happening for hydrogen generation and hydrogen transportation, which is really also the challenge. Sure. Once this problem is solved, and if, as the government uh, has publicly stated that the eventual, uh, let's say, target is to bring the price of hydrogen down to about uh, one uh, one rupee per unit. Now, mm -hmm. at the moment, it's about 10. So there's a factor of eight to 10, which it has to come down to. Even if it doesn't come down to one, even if it comes to two or three or four, then to a great extent at that point in time, long distance transportation using hydrogen will become very viable. We have already started work in partners to, to make a few sample buses. Uh, this is something which will take time. It's not something which will happen from this month to next month. Mm -hmm. But certainly, as I said, my view is that within a maybe a three to five year kind of time frame, you will start to see a lot of hydrogen buses because they will start making commercial sense. And possibly in, in more uh, smaller applications to begin with, then uh, what, what you talked about long distance uh, travel, right? Actually, conversely, a hydrogen is more suitable for long distance than it is for short distance. Personally, my view is that electric mobility will remain the uh, medium of choice if you're traveling for city buses. Mm -hmm. Typically, if you're going to travel, uh, let's say, a distance of uh, between Delhi and Mumbai, or you're traveling between Indore and Pune, uh, those are the kind of distances where hydrogen may be more suitable. Right, right. Uh, you know, when we look at both electric as well as hybrid, Mr. Mehta, uh, what are some of the biggest concerns and challenges that you see in, in bringing products to the market currently? So I think it's an ecosystem development issue and it's what typical in such uh, sunrise sectors, it's a chicken and egg situation. Right. So not only is the vehicle, you need mm -hmm. the charging infrastructure to develop, you need uh, the financing infrastructure to develop, and most importantly, you need safety considerations to be fully kept in mind. 
I think these are the three most important aspects. Let me address each of these. Uh, first and foremost, all commercial vehicles are financed. And unless there is a very strong financial ecosystem for financing of EVs, you will not start to see adaptation. Adaptation will only happen when customer can go in like they do for conventional vehicles, pay 10% upfront, and then the remaining amount typically gets financed by a bank or an NBFC or some financial institution. At the moment, this is a major challenge for EVs because uh, financial institutions don't have history of repossessions, don't have history of uh, what could be resale values. This is a completely nascent sector. Mm. So they are to some extent hesitant about financing. And this is where the government will have to work in close cooperation with industry to make it happen. That's the first part. Mm. Second part is charging infrastructure to keep up now. Uh, here, a lot of action is happening. There are many charging companies which are setting up of charging networks, but for a country, the size and scale of India and with the grid challenges that we have, this is definitely going to be one of the big factors which will determine the adaptation of electric vehicles, number two. Hmm. And number three, I think, is the safety of uh, battery technology. Now, recently, there has been a lot of discussion around this. Uh, actually, uh, electric vehicles are safe, but there have been certain incidents which obviously are very worrying. They, they need to be taken care of. Safety standards have to be set. Recall standards have to be set. And typically what happens in a mature industry environment will also have to happen for electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. And I think the industry will evolve. They will improve. And certainly in a mid to long term basis, I think the solution for a country like India, which is very deficient on fossil fuel, has to be movement to electric mobility. So, Mr. Mehta, you know, if you could also give us a sense of the kind of investments that's going on to this new venture, and uh, what about uh, the funds? Where are you raising it? Is it internal accruals? Give us a sense of that, please. Sure. So, uh, we were fortunate to have qualified as one of the champion auto OEMs under the government's auto PLI scheme, and uh, we have committed to make an investment of 2,000 crores over the next five years to the government. And this also means that we are able to pass on some benefits to our customers mm -hmm. once we get the incentives from the government, and also for exports, which uh, helps in early adaptation of these vehicles. Now, up to now, the project has been done through internal accruals, but we are in the process of raising our first external round of funding. And in fact, uh, we, uh, this is something which will be on an ongoing basis as uh, investments will be required to scale up capacities, both for uh, buses and light commercial vehicles, but we'll do it in steps as the market evolves. Okay. Okay. So how do you look at the entire picture? What is the outlook that you have for, if you could just give us a sense of the short term, mid term and the long term uh, horizon? So personally, I'm very excited about this space. And I think it's not just for our company, but for our country. Uh, this, as I said uh, at the beginning, is probably going to become the largest manufacturing industry out of India. Uh, India for a long time has been searching for our next growth engine after the IT boom. And IT was really the industry which propelled India. Uh, personally, I believe that uh, the electrical vehicle ecosystem offers the opportunity for India to excel. Mm -hmm. And that's for a couple of reasons that uh, India will be one of the largest EV markets by volume in the next 10 years. If you mm -hmm. see, we are already the largest two-wheeler market in the world. Right. We are already one of the largest markets for commercial vehicles. All of these are prime candidates for moving towards e-mobility. And a solution which comes out of India is not going to be a solution which is only applicable for India, but is also applicable for many, many other countries around the world, which will need solutions besides the European and the US, which are very expensive, and the Chinese, which have certain severe limitations. Mm -hmm. So not only does our country have an opportunity to kind of transform our own ecosystem, but to become one of the leaders for export. And this is really our wish. And uh, personally, what I believe is that uh, India certainly has the opportunity to do it because we have all of the building blocks. We have a strong manufacturing industry. We have a strong software background by which is very important for EV vehicles a lot of the vehicle is software so mm -hmm. that combination of both uh, mechanical hard skills as well as software is actually uniquely available in India and we are very well positioned to be one of the leaders in the EV ecosystem right, right. Mr. Mehta thank you so much for speaking to Mobility Outlook today and uh, truly appreciate thank you thank you and uh, thanks for all the wonderful work that you're doing